I'm good. How are you doing? Good. Thank you so much for talking to us today. Uh, no worries at all. No worries. Just talk, just had a great conversation with your TV wife. <laughs> yeah, I saw. I was watching. Oh, okay, okay. So, Lamont, tell us, how are you feeling today? We have a little bit more time because we're not that much rushed, so we can talk uh, a little bit longer. How uh, are you feeling I'm, today? I'm good. Um, I was in the Bay Area, and I just got back uh, yesterday, so... I wasn't really sleeping that well out there, but I got back last night and I got some good sleep. So I'm relaxed and back to the norm. So I'm good. Speaking of the Bay, you grew up in the Bay, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Talk to us a little bit about growing up in the Bay Area. You were into sports as a kid. You played uh, football, basketball. Is that right? No, I played uh, baseball and I played uh, football as well all the way up until about my sophomore or junior year. Okay. That's around the time where I was focused on other things. Uh, so sports kind of took, uh, took the, back, uh, the back end of that. But, yeah, no, I've always been into sports. Um, as I've gotten older, just got more into boxing. Oh, okay. I love it. Um, what career path were you on as a kid? What, what would you be doing now if you weren't an actor and a model? What career would you be in? Um, I would be working with animals. Yeah. Uh, I would say... For about 10 years or so, I worked at a, uh, a veterinary hospital as an emergency veterinary technician. So that was something that I've enjoyed. You hear my dog barking right now. Yeah. Um, go, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. You're good. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've always been a, a big animal lover. When I was in the fifth grade, I actually have the yearbook. And there's a little quote that every fifth grader had written. What do you want to be when, you're, uh, when you grow up? Mm -hmm. and, and my quote it said that I wanted to work with animals at the zoo. Wow. So, yeah, I, I kind of stuck with that for a little bit. And then you were a carpenter as well. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, installed and uh, refinished hardwood floors. Wow. So Bad you're, on your back. you're a man of all trades, huh? <laughs> a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. So then you moved to L.A., what, 18 years ago? Is that about right? Yeah, yep, yep. <laughs> And you were scouted for a modeling job. Is that how you got into modeling? Yeah, I was at a job fair and I was scouted uh, to become a model. And I started off doing like little runway shows here and there. And it just took off from there. And you were also in a little tiny video with a certain <laughs> someone who's not so tiny, the Queen yeah. Bee, the Cater yeah. to You video. What was that experience like? I mean... Seriously? Yeah, I always say that's that's my claim to fame working with Beyonce. Uh, you know, it was it was a really really fun job. It was uh, I think that was actually the first video that I did. Um, so it was all new to me, and even then, uh, Beyonce was a huge huge deal. So I was a little starstruck uh, and didn't really know my boundaries of what we could do what we couldn't do mm -hmm. uh, but it was fun it was fun and she was really down to earth beautiful woman and very nice and um it's great great to work with yeah texas women we are, we can be down to earth we know how to just let things flow are those the kids in the background hey yeah, that's my daughter <laughs> she always find me when i'm working Ooh, she, she's <laughs> like a magnet as soon as i get to doing something she come around that's the best time to come around <laughs> So then you go on to um, Days of Our Lives actually was your first time on camera, on acting. Is that correct? No, nah, no. Nah. Um, there, there, there was Young and Restless, but there was something uh, I did before Young and... Oh, wait, no, you're right. You're right. Yeah. God, yeah, no, it was Days of Our Lives. I don't know. Ooh, it's been so long. Yes, it was. <laughs> yeah. I had a, a small role as a police officer mm -hmm. on Days of Our Lives. Went on there and said a, and said a few lines got in and got up out of there but it was it was nerve-wracking i remember that was i was so nervous Ooh, i'm surprised i got my lines out but i did it here we are here we are and then young and the restless and then you came back to days so yeah. what was it did you have to audition again to come back on the show absolutely okay what absolutely. was that process like the second time around uh i auditioned maybe uh three three times mm -hmm. i believe to be a to be on the show, I had went called back. Yes. <laughs> um, I had callbacks and um, with my, I had a callback with Vanessa, who <laughs> plays my mother on the show, and I also had a reading with uh, Camila, who plays Gabby on the show. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. 
and then here we are. Yeah. And here we are. Here, here we are. Three three years something later. And we're celebrating your wedding, you and Lonnie's wedding. Elani, hashtag Elani for those mm -hmm. that want to look and see. But I mean, talk to us about I just talked to Sal about this wedding. This wedding was I mean, everybody's been talking about it. Why do you think this wedding is affecting so many people? And why do you think that it took so long for it to a black wedding, a black love wedding between a black male and a black woman to be shown on screen on the show? Yeah. Um, well, to answer the first question, why it's affecting so many people, it's, it's history, mm -hmm. you know, so it should, yeah. uh, and it's black history, it so is. it should. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's, you know, anytime something happens where there's a first or some, some big event happens and something that's never been done on the mm -hmm. show, that's been around for so many years, right. it's always a big thing. And, and, and it's an even bigger thing for me because um you know it's like i said it's black history and mm -hmm. soap operas daytime tv they have a lot a lot a lot of black viewers right uh, so it's 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 a big thing as it should be mm -hmm. um to answer your second question why it uh it hasn't happened in 54 years mm -hmm. you know i think um there it, it's no secret that you know daytime tv and soap operas there aren't a lot of black actors you know right. they're there's nowhere near um, the 50-50 ratio, not even the 40, you know, 40-60 ratio. Right. So with a lack of African-Americans and a lack of um, African-Americans being on the screen the same as the uh, their white counterparts, mm -hmm. that leads to less story. If you have less story, then you have things like this so but we have turned a corner yeah and, and uh we now have the first african-american wedding on days and we are riding that coattail and you know on to uh bigger and better things so I, I'm, I'm thrilled that we got to to have this done uh to do this i'm thrilled that we got to um include some black heritage yes. in it yeah um and you know i i think it was a monumental moment, it seemed to be. I hope it was, and um, it was a great thing. Speaking of heritage, and your um, TV wife is in the comments. She's saying she's proud of you. She speaking, there, she's there. Yeah, she's it there. So speaking of heritage, whose idea was it to bring in the jumping of the broom? I love it. It was both of ours. It was okay. uh, Sal, Sal and uh, my idea we we were talking i think we were in between scenes or whatnot and mm -hmm. i don't know who it was one of us brought it up and uh sal she's when you get something in sal's head she's she's off to make it happen i, I think we were talking about it and i, I might have got caught up in doing something else and i think she came back she was like okay so i talked to albert and he's gonna do this and he's gonna figure it out blah, blah, blah. and i was like really already you made it happen so then they came i think it was the next day we um we were reading the script and we were shocked to see that you know they had included it and not only included it but even added you know some lines to like really let the the viewers there's a lot of people that have no idea you know white people and, and other races that have no idea what it is never heard of it you know i saw some of the comments they were like oh i never heard of that thank you for doing this you know and sharing you know some of you know african-american heritage because i had no idea so it was good that days included you know a, a brief statement about you know the origin of it educational wouldn't you say yeah. I mean, because i feel like we've been learning the history and the culture of our white counterparts for so long. So I feel like this was a good educational moment because I feel like we're all in the educational moment right now. Black people, we white people, we're all learning, right? So much new information. So I thought that that was dope how you guys, you know, educated the people that were unaware or not sure, not to their fault. They just probably hadn't heard of it before to yeah. know about the jumping of the broom. So mm -hmm. I thought that was dope. Um, where is the story going? Where Where is Ilani? Where do you see the story going? Where would you like for it to go? To the moon, to the moon. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't even know. <laughs> I have no idea where, I, I do know there, uh, uh, she's pregnant. Yes. So um, I think when we left, she was definitely showing. 
we did not get to complete any of the uh, the baby stuff, so she hasn't had the baby. So I don't I don't know. I, I mean, I'm I'm curious as well. You know, that's kind of always the way it is mm -hmm. uh, with soaps, as opposed to like a film where you actually get the full scripts. So you know what's happening from beginning to end. But in this case, working with soaps, we kind of find out what's going to happen as we receive episodes. Um, we sh were shooting and we had shot episodes all the way up until maybe the end of October. Okay. Uh, so there is still a lot of um, Alani and a lot more new episodes okay. um, to be seen. But as far as what's going to happen, you know what? I, I, I can't say. There's a big surprise that, you know. Uh, Feel the tea, Lamar. Huh? Feel the tea now. Yeah, no, I can't spill too much. I gotta keep a job. Yeah, keep your job. Keep yeah. your job. Yeah, <laughs> but there's a, there's a, there's a, a surprise coming for uh, Alani fans. I feel like we've always got some, you know, Alani fans always got some surprises coming, which is always good. So we'll I, see. Love, I love that. I can't wait to see it. Um, so All American, mm -hmm. we saw you in the season finale of All American. Um, can we expect to see you coming up in the next season? I hope so. We will see. Okay. Uh, you know that when I did shoot that, that was um, a, a, a guest appearance uh, on the show, and the cast and, and crew were absolutely amazing. Let me tell you, it was. A, I got on set air. Most people was black. I was like, dang, this you is were like, like a I cookout. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh my goodness. Right. It was a. Uh, it was a shock for sure. Um, but, you know, I had, I had really fun uh, shooting that episode. Again, like I said, everyone was mad cool. Uh, it was a one-off. So we'll see if the, you know, if the writers include me in next season, what they have in store. I have no idea, but hopefully it includes me. So we shall see. Yes. Do you consider yourself a sex symbol, Lamont? No, I don't. You should have saw me when I woke up this morning. <laughs> Woo! Wasn't pretty. I actually should make sure, I see how I look now, make sure... I ain't got nothing in my teeth or in my nose because we know Sal will bring it up to everyone. As she uh, should. She yeah. Should. She I, should I, look I, out. <laughs> she got a good, funny way of looking out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, no, uh, what was your question? Do, do I consider, consider myself a sex symbol? Yeah. No. no, I don't. I mean. Somebody said, let me tell you what the comments just said. Hell yeah, why is he lying? So, <laughs> are you lying? Or do, Sal is laughing. So, Sal, does he consider himself? Tell us in the comments. Does he uh -oh. consider himself a sex symbol? Don't don't ask Sal. <laughs> don't ask Sal. Uh, no, I I mean I don't I don't think so. I I definitely, you know, don't uh, like to to carry that on my shoulders. But if, if fans or anyone wants to give it to me, I'll take it. Right. Why not take it? Why not? Why not? And then on a serious tip, so you were out at the recent protest um, recently and, you know, utilizing your platform and your voice to speak about and be on the front lines for change. Why was it important for you to attend the protest? Um, there is a calling right now, not only for myself, but for everyone, mm -hmm. not only for Black people, but for everyone that stands against injustice right stands for racial equality to you know get out there and make a change in any way that they possibly can mm -hmm. and me being a, a man of color a, an african-american man is definitely my responsibility to get out there and um be a part of this and do anything i can to to make a change right. and to continue to not just you know, for the moment while it's a, a hot topic. Right. You know, so it, it, it's a duty and it's something that I take pride in and it's something that um, I am hoping immediately, I think the, the term sooner than later is too damn late, right. but uh, immediately we can, we can see some change. Now that we have the world's attention, do you feel that this is different from times before when we had uprisings? Do you feel like this time our voices will be heard? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yes, yes and no. Um, this definitely feels different. Mm -hmm. It looks different. Mm -hmm. um, 
I have noticed a lot more um, other nationalities and uh, that are coming uh, out on the forefronts and the front lines, which is something we need, right. which is something that is great. Um, but the thing is, there, there have been some steps that have been taken that, you know, are, are much needed, like Rihanna's law. Yes. Um, but as a whole, I don't think, I, I don't know yet. There, you know, it, it's yet to be seen if there has been um, a real change. Right. I, I've said it before, we, we saw what happened to Rodney King. Mm -hmm. You know, all of the police officers were arrested. Right. All of them walked out of that, that, that precinct. Yeah. You feel me? So there's still a lot of work that needs to be done, a, 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 a ton of work that needs to be done. And as of right now, I, I don't think it would be safe to say that we have seen change. Are you, as a parent of three, are you having the difficult conversations with your children on what's going on? Or are you waiting to talk to them about the climate of where we are in our country? No, I've, I've definitely had those conversations. I've had those conversations before um, all this, you know, has taken place. It's something that um, black parents need mm -hmm. to have with their kids about just, you know, being pulled over by the cops or, you know, any, any, any time there is any type of interaction with right. the police in, in this day and age, you know, being an African-American, there are... And, and it's sad to say, but there are certain rules that, you know, we kind of have to abide by and, and, and things that we can't do freely that our counterparts may be able to do. So, yeah, I've definitely had a, a talk with my kids, even though, you know, they're not out there by themselves. But even when they're with me, there there is a certain way to act, you know, just to make sure that we all make it home safe. Right. And do you think that these changes will affect Hollywood or in particular daytime soap operas in the way that the stories are told in the way that um, the writer's room looks um, or the, the staff looks behind the scenes and on camera. Do you think that this will affect, be a trickle down effect for Hollywood as well? I, I'd hope so. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it's still early. You know, everyone isn't back to work yet. You know, um, it's hard to say. I, I think it's a great thing that Days of Our Lives put this much uh, effort into the Alani wedding. And that happened, again, eight months ago. That's before any of this took right. place. Yeah. Uh, you know, there was, there was a big chunk of time where myself and Sal, we weren't seen on the TV on Days of Our Lives as much as we are now. Mm -hmm. So it seems to be uh, on days, I can only speak for, you know, for what I'm seeing from uh, firsthand, but it seems to be there, there is some change happening. Uh, and, and that's a great thing. And we just got to hope that, you know, it, it, we keep pushing forward that way. And do you know when you guys are going to start back filming or shooting? I don't. I, I, I do not. You know, it, it, this whole quarantine with everything kind of, or not quarantine with, with the coronavirus, it seems yeah. like we're taking a step back. So, uh, you know, I, I have no idea. Hopefully, you know, everyone gets out there and wears a damn mask and protects themselves and protects others and we can right. move past this or if we don't move past it, we can learn a way to coexist and deal with it, you know, safely. Uh, but as far as work, uh, I don't even know yet. Yeah. And so what are you up to next? What are you working on? What are you working on during quarantine? Because I know you had a few, two films that you were working on that you had worked on. Are those yeah. the best be? I have one completed film that uh, I've written with a partner of mine. That's a drama that we're currently looking for uh, either investors or production. Mm -hmm. And during this time that I've had off, I have uh, written an outline with my writer as well for a comedy film that we're currently looking for a writer for. I just created a short film about a couple weeks ago that uh, is, there's some finishing touches being put on that before we can actually... Um, Sorry, uh, before we can actually get started on that. So there's, there, there's work. There is isn't day-to-day -day work, you know, mm -hmm. that keeps me busy eight hours a day. There's something right. to do. I've been doing stuff around the house. Um, but, you know, Are you cleaning day up to day, trying to find things to do, keep me busy here and there. So, you know, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we're, like I said, taking it day by day.
And how are you self, how are you practicing self care during all of this? How are you taking care of you? I've been eating. I've been, what? that's how I've been taking care of me. I've been eating ice cream. You be eating? You be cooking? Cold stone. I had some uh, uh, Marie Callender's pumpkin pie last Ooh. night. Um, I, I had uh, a birthday cake. My birthday was in April, but April? that ice cream cake, it lasts me for a whole month. I was just eating the ice cream. The cake went bad, but I just ate the ice cream on top. I've been eating, so I got the little quarantine belly right now. So maybe one day I'll, I'll get my mind right. I'll get into uh, the gym. I'm in my garage right now. So wish me luck that I get back into it so I don't exit quarantine with this belly. Sal just gave us tips on how to work out at home. So Oh, did she? She did. Because <laughs> Sal is not playing about that quarantine 15. She said, I don't think so. Uh-uh. Yeah, no, nah, she don't. <laughs> Sal would be walking up and down the stairs doing lunges and stuff. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Lamont, for talking to us today. I greatly appreciate you, too. We are rooting for you guys. We can't thank wait you. to continue to watch this love story play out. Um, thank you for showcasing this Black love that we so need on TV right now. So shout out to you and Sal. I love you both. Thank you so thank much. You. All right. <laughs> thank you so much. You have a good day. Y'all, too. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. I get up out where is the buzz you said? Where is the buzz?